Hello everyone and once again I welcome you to my class. In our earlier classes we discussed about the members of the liver wards that is Markensia and Rickshia. Today we are going to discuss about another important genus called Anthocerus and it is commonly known as hornworts. It is called hornworts due to the presence of this horn or bristle-like sporophytic structure which are developed above the gametophytic plant body. So let us start about the genus Anthocerus. Systematically, it belongs to the family of Anthocerotaceae, order is Anthocerotales, and the class is Anthocerotopsida under the bryophytes. These Anthocerotopsida members of this class are commonly known as hornworts. Now, this genus Anthocerus, it has about 200 different species which are distributed all over the world. In India, it is represented by about 25 different species which are mostly confined in the western Himalayan region. And habitat of most of the bryophytes are moist, they prefer moist soil and sandy places like the previous other genera like Ixia and Marcantia. And they are the members of this Anthocerus genus. They are also found to be growing on decaying woods. However, Unlike other bryophytic plants, this particular genus Anthocerus, it is not well conditioned or adapted to resist very dry conditions. Now let us move on to the gametophytic phase or the external morphology. The plant body of Anthocerus, it is thalloid. It is also dorsiventrally flattened, prostrate. It is dark green in color due to the presence of photosynthetic filaments along with pyrenoids and it also shows irregular dichotomous branching. And because of this irregular dichotomous branching, the typical roseate-like form of thallus which we saw in case of rickshia, here it appears the shape of orbicular or semi-orbicular roseate-like appearance of the thallus due to irregular dichotomous branching. And it ultimately results in three different forms of thallus. The first one is bilobed, which is the thallus is bilobed due to this irregular dichotomous branching. And sometimes they may also develop on a thick vertical stalk like structure, like this one in this case. And in some other genera, some spherical spongy bodies which are called the gamma, and these are the gamma calves within which the gamma are developed. So these gamma-like structures are also present on the external morphology of the plant body of Anthocerus. Anatomy of the thallus. This is a section through the Anthocerus thallus. Anatomically, you can see here the thallus is very simple, unlike that of Marcantia, it is quite simple, and it is differentiated into two regions specifically. This is the upper epidermis and this is the lower epidermal tissue. In between this upper and lower epidermis, the simple parenchymata cells are present, which also includes these air chambers and air pores. Now, these air chambers or air pores that are absent on the upper epidermis of the anthocerous plant body. Now, each cell also contains a B chloroplast and which contains single pyrenoid in its center and these pyrenoids these are the centers of carbon dioxide fixation and in some species some algal filaments including nostoc are also present in the plant body or in the cellular structure of anthocerus. Let us move on to the reproduction part. Anthocerus it repro reproduces by following methods and these are vegetative method and sexual method. Now vegetative method of reproduction includes the first method is by death of the older parts. The progressive death and decay of the older part of the plant body of Anthocerus occurs and this process may reach up to the dichotomy 
the irregular dichotomous branching that appears, leaving only the apical regions of the thallus. So this apical region of the thallus, it may survive and can regenerate new plant body or new thallus. However, this is not a very common method of vegetative reproduction in case of anthocerus. There are other methods like by production of tubers or by formation of these gamma cups which are seen in some species of anthocerus. Now these tubers, these are produced during unfavorable environmental conditions. These tubers are very rich in stored fats and proteins and because of which they can withstand prolonged unfavorable dry environmental conditions and they can germinate when the conditions again becomes normal or favorable for germination. Now these gamma are produced within the gamma cup in some plant species of anthocerus which are produced on short stalks on the upper surface of the thallus and when the condition becomes favorable then this gamma can also germinate into a new thallus or new plant body in case of anthocerus. So these are the three different methods of vegetative reproduction in case of anthocerus. Anthocerus also reproduces by sexual method. The plant body of anthocerus it may be monoecious or it may be dioecious. Now what is monoecious and what is dioecious we have already discussed in our previous classes. So in case of monoecious species the plant body they are protendrous. Now what is the meaning of this protendrous? It means the development of the male sex organ that is the antheridium takes place earlier to the female sex organ development that is archegonium. So that is what is called protandrous. But in case of dioecious species it has been generally found that the male plants are smaller than the female plants. But whether the antheridia or archegonia which are produced in a single plant body or on different plant body but it is seen that they are always embedded in the thallus on the dorsal surface of the plant body of anthocerus. So this embedded sex organ in the thallus this particular peculiar character we found in case of rickshia also. So in case of anthocerus also it has been found that the sex organs whether they are born on a single plant or two different plant they are always embedded in the thallus. Now this is the structure of the antheridium or the male sex organ. The antheridia they are produced within a particular cavity and this cavity is known as the antheridial chamber. So they may be either produced singly or in groups within this antheridial chamber and they are totally covered by a double layer of cells. And this covering doesn't have any op opening like osteoles were present in case of the other members like Euxia and Marcantia antheridium. But in case of anthocerus, this antheridial chamber doesn't have any osteol like opening, it is totally closed. Now, if this is totally closed, then what do you think? How the dehiscence of the antheridia or this androcyte and andro androcytes takes place? So this takes place by breaking down this roof of this antheridial chamber. It breaks down by absorbing water, and this is how the dehiscence of this androcytes or this biflagellated anthrozoids takes place. So this is a diagrammatic view you can see here. These are two antheridia which are developed within this antheridial chamber. This is the roof of the antheridial chamber which is two layered and they are well protected by this roof. Now this antheridial chamber, it encloses a large mass of androcytes. Each of these androcyte cell later on develop into biflagellated anthrozoids or sperms. This is the structure of the archegonium. This is the egg cell. In the center of this archegonium, you can see here, this is the egg cell which is well protected within this ventral cavity, which is surrounded by this ventral canal cell, neck canal cell, and on the top, there are cover cells. So this and archegonia, they're also embedded in the thallus. Only 
discover cells, they are found to be projected above the surface of the gametophytic thallus, porophytic thallus. Now, this archegonium, when it is ready for fertilization, then this ventral canal cell and the neck canal cells, they disintegrate and it forms a mucilaginous mass like structure. So, a mucilaginous matrix of cells through which the enterozoids they can enter and can continue and complete the process of fertilization leading to the formation of a diploid zygote. So this is how the fertilization process takes place. The male gamete it unites with the female gamete when they are matured enough the process called fertilization leading to the formation of a diploid or uh, diploid zygote zygotic cell and in all these cases water is also essential to complete this process of fertilization in case of anthocerous also now after the formation of this diploid zygote it starts the sporophytic phase in case of antero anteros anthocerous which is the first cell of the sporophytic generation now it will then again enlarge until an endless it completely fills the venter of the archegonium. Now this sporophyte of anthocerous, which is the result of this fertilization, it is very peculiar in the case that the mature sporophyte or the sporogonium, it is differentiated into foot, an intermediate meristematic zone and capsule. Now this intermediate meristematic zone is a very peculiar character which is seen in case of the sporogonium of anthocerous and it replaces sita like in other uh, genus like in case of Markinsia we found that there is a food there is a sita and a capsule but in case of anthocerous this sita is completely replaced by this intermediate meristematic zone and there is no sita present so this is the structure of the sporogonium you can see here it is a very peculiar structure that this sporophyte after the development or after the end of the sporophytic phase, the sporophyte, it, it, it is a horn or bristle-like structure which is found to be projected few centimeters above the gametophytic land body and that is why the common name hornwort comes from. So this is the LS. If you cut a section through this sporogonium you will find or you will see this type of structure so this is the massive food which is present this food this is the sterile structure and the sita it has been replaced by this meristematic zone which is continuously dividing and there is another peculiar structure present in the sporophyte or sporogonium of anthocerous and that is known as the presence of columella so this columella is a very peculiar character which is seen in case of this anthocerous sporophyte. It provides mechanical support to the sporophyte of anthocerous and it also helps in the process of dehiscence or spore dispersal in case of anthocerous. The archisporium is also present and this is a capsule wall. Now in between this capsule wall and this columella, the elators or pseudo elators they are present in alternate bands so that way the structure of the sporophyte is very peculiar it replaces sita there is a presence of meristematic zone there is a presence of columella and other sterile structures are present which makes the sporophyte of anthocerous very peculiar and unique among the bryophytes now let us see how this dehiscence or dispersal of spore in case of anthocerous takes place. So dispersal of or the dehiscence of the capsule occurs due to the changes in humidity. The capsule it dries up and the sporangial walls and the cells of columella they they are split apart and results in the dispersal or dehiscence of the spores so this is the structure microscopic structure of the anthocerous capsule and due to the change in moisture it undergoes the process of spore dispersal so this is if we cut a transverse section through this anthocerous sporophyte you will see a structure like this 
So this is the, the medial portion is the columella. These are the spore tetras, which is the only fertile tissue. And the rest of this archosporium, the jacket layer and all, these are all the sterile tissues which are present in the sporogonium of anthocerus. Now, evolutionary significance, as I have already mentioned, this, the anthocerous sporophyte is very peculiar. And according to the theory of progressive evolution of sporophytes, which we have already discussed in our previous class, the anthocerous it represents the seventh stage in the process of progressive evolution of sporophytes. There is a marked reduction in the sporogenous tissues in the capsule or sporogonium of anthocerous, it has been noted, and it is seen that the spores, the spore tetras, and ultimately the spores, they are the only fertile tissues, and rest of all are the sterile tissues, which make it evolutionary very, very significant. Now, there are a few other advanced features of the sporophyte of anthocerous which makes it evolutionary very important the first point is the capsule wall of the anthocerous is multi-layered and it contains chlorophyll containing cells along with species intercellular species now this presence of these ventilated photosynthetic tissues that is chlorophyll containing cells along with these intercellular species it is a very advanced feature and it is considered to be a step towards the beginning of physiological independence of the sporophyte. So this the presence of this ventilated photosynthetic tissue is a very advanced feature in the sporophyte of anthocerus and it helps the sporophyte to become at least to some extent independent. Physiologically, it is independent of the gametophyte. However, the sporophyte of anthocerus is not completely dependent or independent of the gametophyte. It is also dependent on the gametophyte, but to some extent, it is independent. Then the other point is decentralization and complete sterilization of the central fertile tissues. Then the central region of the sporophyte, it is occupied with a special structure called columella, and it is suggesting the origin of vascular tissues in plants because this columella it provides mechanical support to the anthocerous sporophyte and it also helps in the process of spore dispersal mechanism in the sporophyte of anthocerous therefore there are many scientists like bauer they have the, uh, believe that the presence of this columella it is an evolutionary step towards the development of protostelae like vascular tissues in pteridophytes. So this is another unique and very important peculiar structure or feature in the sporophyte of anthocerous. There is another peculiar structure which is the presence of this archegonium. Due to this development of this archaeosporium, the spore producing region has been shifted from central to the superficial region of the capsule of or uh, spor sporogonium of anthocerus and it helps in easy dispersal of spores also. The another peculiar character is the presence of alternate bands of elators and fertile spore mother cells in the sporophyte of anthocerus. This is also an evolutionary important character and it is considered to be an initial step towards the origin of sporangia and sporophylls by many bryologists and Bauer, which is a very prominent biologist, he considered this step to be towards the origin and evolution of leaves and sporangia in pteridophytes. And this theory of Bauer is known as the theory of origin of strobilus. Then the other peculiar characters like the presence of intercalary meristematic zone, which is present in place of Ceta in case of anthocerus, and it helps in the prolonged the more time in producing spores as long as the gametophytic thallus is surviving. So the anthocerus sporophyte is long lived because of the presence of this intercalary meristematic tissue. 
There is also another character like the food is very mushy. This mushy food and the presence of this rhizoid like processes in the food of the Anthocerus, it is a very advanced feature and it also indicates evolutionary significance or evolutionary trends. Then another character is the cylindrical body of the capsule, it is upright. Like in case of others, it was not found to be upright, but here it is upright cylindrical body of the capsule due to the presence of columella and other supporting tissues, which is also considered as an advanced feature in the sporophyte of Anthocerus. So these are all the very peculiar characters, and this leads to the evolutionary as well as biological significance biologically the anthocerous sporophyte it becomes very very significant among the bryophytes this is the overall life cycle you can see here the gametophytic generation is quite bigger compared to the sporophytic generation zygote it is the first cell of the sporophytic generation and the spores they represent the first state of the gametophytic generation and these two generations alternate so as to continue the life cycle of anthocerus so this is all about in our today's class thank you for watching and if you consider this is a quite helpful then please like and don't forget to subscribe it thank you